Hi everyone, I hope you've had a great week. Today we're going to walk through lessons 89 through 92. So let's get started. This week you're going to need your lessons manual, the student worksheet book, the math card games manual with the game cards, and the AL abacus. This week, your child will continue learning multi-digit subtraction. So let's get started by turning to lesson 89. If you have a lesson manual printed in 2017 or earlier, there is a correction listed for this lesson. You'll want to check out our webpage um, under the correction section and make the necessary changes before you start teaching this lesson. Now, the first two paragraphs of the warm up will be asking basic questions about subtraction. One of the questions is something that they've covered previously, and that is how many subtraction equations there are when you're subtracting from 10. Now, um, there are 11 of them, and if your child struggles with this, make sure that they write out all 11 problems. Remember, there is a 10 minus 10 and a 10 minus 0 included in that total. Now, the third paragraph is having you provide your child with subtraction problems to solve in their math journal. Remember those pages, those math journal pages are in the back of the student worksheets book. Uh, you may also want to consider writing these problems down on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper before their math class begins. Then you can have your child copy them down in their math journal and solve without you having to be there. And so then while they're doing those, um, those problems, then you could teach another child or work on another project in your home. I love these type of activities. That way I can get some things done in my house as well. Um, these problems are actually designed to be solved independently so you can let your child go. Now, that being said, for some struggling learners, you may need to be there for assistance, um, either in helping them to write, write the problems down or um, guiding them along the way, depending on how, how much your child struggles. However, most children should be able to uh, solve these problems on their own. Now, the last paragraph in the warm up is actually asking questions about place value. So the rest of the lesson is going to be working through the first two problems on the worksheet. You're not going to give your child the worksheet yet, but you will be working through those first two problems together. That being said, you may want to write down the problem as you work through it so your child can then write it on their worksheet, especially if you have a struggling learner. In this lesson, subtraction problems will be written down vertically as opposed to horizontally, which is how you've been uh, presenting subtraction problems. Also, take a look at the third paragraph in the explanation section. It says this, this activity focuses on the subtracting process not on the recording on the paper. That means that you do not need to worry about showing how to notate the trading or borrowing, um, even though it is, uh, they'll be writing it out. That's gonna, that process is gonna be shared later. Right now, we're just trying to get that process down of how we subtract and how we borrow or trade. Now, the first step is that you're gonna do is write down the problem 4,995 minus 111. Now your child is going to solve this problem using the abacus. Again, for this lesson, your child will be working from left, left to right. Um, and I know that is a concern for many parents because um, it is different from how they've learned. However, as long as a child understands what they are doing and why, does it really matter what side they start on? Um, in the next several lessons, your child is going to learn how to evaluate and look uh, for those times when the child's going to need to trade or borrow in advance of solving a subtraction problem. So going from left to right or right to left will not really matter that much. Your child will understand and that is what is important. Okay, now back to this problem. Let me walk you through the first round of this subtraction problem, which is the 4,995 minus 111 using the abacus. So we're gonna work through the first part of this problem, which is 4,995 minus 111. We're going to put that information, or go ahead and enter that into the abacus. Four thousand nine hundred ninety-five, and then we are going to subtract one hundred and eleven. We're going to start in the hundreds. We're going to take one hundred, one ten, and one one uh, one of the ones away, which leaves us with four thousand eight hundred and eighty-four.
Now, when I did this problem with my my kids, um, I would write all of the problems and solutions out as I progressed through. And that way it would keep my child from getting lost in the process where we're working on 1, 000, or 111, subtracting 222 or 444. It kind of kept them straight and knowing where they were, especially for my struggling learners. Um, you're, you will then continue uh, with your child through the process of solving 4,884 minus 222, then minus 333, then minus 444, all the way to subtracting um, 999. Now, some of these problems will have trading involved and some will not. There will not be any trading when the child is subtracting 111, 222, and 555. There will be trading for the remaining problems. So let me show you one that you were going to have to do that's going to have trading involved. So this is what the abacus is going to look like after the student has subtracted 111 and 222. Our next step is to subtract 333. So we're going to go again to our hundreds. We have three, so we can go ahead and subtract those three. We have another three. So we're going to subtract three, the three tens, but we're going to take a look. We don't have enough to subtract three ones. So we're going to go back to our tens. We're going to trade one ten for ten ones. On your mark, get set, trade. And now we have enough to subtract the three. So our answer after this, after subtracting 333, is 4,329. Now there is one problem that is that the trading is a little bit more complicated. So let me walk you through that one. The next part uh, that I'm going to walk through is the more trickier problem, the trickier trading problem, which is 1,887 and so minus 888. So we're going to first go ahead and put those numbers up on the abacus, 1,887. Then I'm going to evaluate because I'm subtracting from this number 888. Well, I know I have 800 here, that's fine. I know I have 800 here, which is fine, but I don't have eight here. And I can tell by looking at this, I'm going to need to do some trading. So here's the problem. If I trade from here, this one's not gonna have eight. So I'm gonna to need to trade from here, which means this one's not gonna have eight. So I'm gonna start by trading my 1,000 bead for 10 hundred beads. That's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to start with this trade. And then I'm going to trade for another uh, 1 100 bead for 10, uh, 10 beads. <laughs> trade that. Then I can trade 1 10 bead for 10 1 beads. Now I can go ahead and do my subtraction. 800, eight tens, and eight ones. And my final answer is 999. Once your child has worked through all of these subtraction problems, their final answer should be zero. At this point in your lesson, you're going to give your child worksheet 57. Now they're going to go ahead and fill out that first column of the worksheet, which is what you've worked through during the lesson. The second column of the worksheet is your child working through the problem themselves, if possible. Now the first few problems in the second column are a bit more tricky, so you may want to be available if your child needs assistance. Also, as a helpful hint to you, something I learned with doing worksheets like this, um, and also to prevent huge frustration for your kids, you may want to check every answer or every couple of answers as they work through the problem. Because if they make an error on the first or second problem, all of the rest of the problems on that page in that column will be incorrect and your child will have to erase, go back and correct that first problem and then redo all of the remaining of the problems. And that causes a lot of frustration, at least it did for my kids. Um, what I used to do is had my kids just shout out the answer as they got to it. And I would say, yep, 
or try it again. And then um, that way they were find their error. I didn't tell, help them find their error at all. They still had to find their own error, but they didn't have to redo the entire worksheet again. <laughs> Now, if your child has difficulty writing, because I know we have some struggling learners in our group and um, some, some kids just struggle with the writing. So if that's the case, then you can go ahead and fill in the worksheet for your child. You may also want to have your child work on a whiteboard. For some reason, kids who struggle with writing do better when they're writing on a whiteboard. So that might be another option for you. And then once they solve that problem, then you go ahead and put it on their worksheet for them. Now, there is not a math card game listed for this lesson. So you're going to want to add a game that will build your child's math facts skills. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 90. The first paragraph of the warm up is asking the same questions as in the pre previous days. The second paragraph in the warm up is going to list problems for your child to solve in their math journal. And again, you can use this time to get other work done. All you have to do is simply write the problems down in advance on a whiteboard on a sheet of paper. And then your child can copy those problems over and solve in their math journal. The third paragraph is asking questions about place value. Now this lesson is going to be working through the first two problems on the worksheet. And the first problem you will work through is 6,829 minus 2,637. Again, you're going to write this problem in vertical format. Take a look at the explanation section, um, the third paragraph down actually, it says this, the subtraction algorithm taught here precede, proceeds from left to right like division. Children naturally prefer to work from left to right. Um, note that we are still subtracting left to right when we're doing these problems. So the child is going to need to learn to evaluate the, the problem for future trades or borrowing. And that is what this lesson is going to teach. They're going to teach them how to evaluate the problem. All right, so we have the equation 6,829 minus 2,637. And you're going to start off by asking your child what they will subtract first, which is the thousands place, the 6,000 minus 2,000. You are then going to take a look. If you look at the middle of the first page of the lesson, um, there's a sentence that says this. Before we write 4,000, we need to think, should we save 1,000 for trading? It is at this point that you're having your child evaluate um, the subtraction problem and determining if they will need to be borrowing and trading for the next place value. In this particular case, you do not need to hold back a thousand because there's no trading. So you're really going to be subtracting 820, um, 829 minus 637. There's plenty, you do not need to trade. So you can go ahead and write that four in the thousands place. Then you're going to ask your child what is subtracted next, the hundreds, which will be 800 minus 600. Again, you're going to ask your child if they need to save a hundred for the trading. In this case, they are going to need to save 100 because the, the next uh, two digits, they're going to be subtracting 29 minus 37, which means they don't have enough. So they need to save that 100 for that part of the problem. So even though 800 minus 600 is 200, we will only use 100 in the solutions because we'll need that other 100 when we're subtracting from the tens. Now, because of this trade, we need to make a notation in the problem. And we need to no show the child um, that the two in the tens place is now a 12. So we're going to put a one in front of that two. If you'll take a look at the top of the second page of the lesson, it shows you how to make that notation and how to explain it to your child. Also, take a look in the, section, in the explanation section on that page. It says on the very top paragraph, in this example, there is no reason to cross out the eight and write a seven above it. If after subtracting eight minus six and writing before the two, the child discovers 100 is needed for the tens, they write one less or one more. The child does not need to subtract six from seven. Now, I will say that for my struggling learners, they did actually cross out the eight and put the seven. 
they needed it to keep track of what they were doing and why. Numerous times they would get lost in the subtraction process. Um, so when they were looking back at the problem, they needed to figure out, well, why did I do that? Um, so simply by putting the one in front of the two, they would question themselves. Was that just an accidental mark or did I use that from something? So by crossing off the eight and making it a seven, it reminded them that they took an extra hundred in this case, um, to put it in the tens place. You work this with what works best in your family and what works better for your child. Now from there, you will have your child subtract 120 minus 30, which leaves 90. Now have your child check to see if they're going to need an extra 10 for the next part of the problem when they're subtracting the ones. Well, they do not. They're going to be doing nine minus seven, so they're not going to need any borrowing. So they're just going to put, go ahead and put down the nine in the tens place. Then they're going to go ahead and subtract the nine minus seven, which is two. That makes their total final answer 4,192. You will then work through the second problem on the worksheet, which is 7,094 minus 3,528. Now remember to ask your child to evaluate the problem in advance to know if they need to trade or borrow for the next place value. Then you're going to have your child work through the next four subtraction problems on their worksheet. They will complete the rest of those problems in the next few lessons, so you don't need to worry about all of the rest of the problems. Now, again, if your child has a problem with tracking, don't forget that you can use a piece of paper to block out the rest of the problems so your child doesn't get distracted or overwhelmed with the number of problems on the sheet. Again, there is not a math card game listed for this lesson, so make sure you, uh, you pick a game that will keep up your child's math facts. If you see your child is struggling with subtraction while working through these problems, um, play some games that will help your child get stronger with those subtraction math facts. Now, if your child has the subtraction down and they're just zipping through them, you may want to introduce some math, uh, multiplication math card games. Well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 91. The first paragraph of the warm up is having your child complete the next two subtraction problems from worksheet 58. Now, these problems should be done independently unless you have a struggling learner who would need your assistance. The second and fourth paragraphs are asking questions about place value. And then the third paragraph is reviewing comparison words. Now the first pair, the first activity after the warm up is playing a game. You're going to play the car, the card game zero corners. You did play this game before in lesson 52, but we also have a blog for it, so you can go to our website, look it up, and to review how it is played if you haven't, if you don't recall how it's played. Now this specific game is going to start with the number 365. Once this game has been played, then go ahead and give your child worksheet 59. If you'll take a look at the second paragraph on the top of the second page, um, you're asking a question about the initial problem 3,570 minus 357. Um, it says this, what is special about the first two numbers? See the figure below. This is an important um, element to for lesson 92, the next lesson. So make sure your child sees how this problem is set up. Um, you will then have your child work through the first column of the worksheet. The rest of the worksheet will be completed in lesson 92. Again, if this is too much writing for your child, um, try to have them solve the problems on a whiteboard or dictate them to you. Now, my struggling learners had a huge struggle when they were writing um, quite a bit. And so the whiteboard really helped them. And then I would just simply copy down their answers onto their worksheet for them. Again, there is not a math card game listed for this lesson. So you're gonna to wanna to play a game that will strengthen your, math, your child's math facts. Well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 92. The first, par or first paragraph of the warm up um, is going to be solving problems nine and 10 from worksheet 58. The next two paragraphs will be asking questions about place value. Um, and then the final paragraph in the warm up is going to be asking your child about trading or borrowing. Once you've completed that section of the lesson, you're going to give your child worksheet 59. 
have your child read through that word problem. It's towards the bottom of the worksheet. Have your child read through that word problem several times to make sure that they understand what they're going to be looking for, the information that they have, and also what information they're going to need. Now on the worksheet at the very bottom, you're going to see a line down here. You're going to see this line. Um, and it marks the different cities it's included in the word problem. So you're, first, you're going to want to first have your child mark the distances that they know. Do they know the total amount? Do they know um, from one city to the next, one city to the next, et cetera? Write down what they do know. Then have your child draw up part whole circles to fill in. Now notice this one's a little different because there's going to be three parts to your part whole circle. Now remember the special part whole circle that we used last week for word problems? Well, this one's gonna be just slightly different. Let me show you what it will look like. So this week we have the larger set still up on top, but this week we have two smaller sets and then the difference. So that way we have three different smaller set um, or three different part circles under our larger set whole circle. Once you discuss the new version of the part whole circle, have your child fill in the part whole circles and build an equation and solve. Then you're going to ask your child to tell you how they solve it. Now there are actually three different ways to solve this problem using addition and or subtraction. These methods are listed in the lesson manual in the middle of the second page of the lesson. Now, if you have a strong or gifted learner, you may want to ask them to try to solve the same problem a different way. Now, also, you're not gonna to want to give any hints to your child. Let them solve the problem, even if they're starting to um, approach it all incorrectly and they mess the whole thing up. Let them go through that process. Don't give them any hints. Instead, let them finish the problem, have them explain it to you, and then follow up with the question that we used last week. Does your answer make sense? Let them look at the distance on the line on their worksheet also, if that helps as well. Guide them to finding their mistakes, if they made one, simply by asking questions, not by telling them how to solve a problem. Um, let, their, let them evaluate their own work, because there is a skill that your child needs to develop, and that is finding their own error. Once your child completes that, then you're going to have your child complete the last two columns on worksheet 59. Now, this is where they're going to create their own problem following these rules. They're going to think of a three digit number and then add a zero to the end of it. Then they're going to subtract that three digit number from that first number. For example, if they decide on the number one, two, three, they first add a zero to that. So that will end up being 1,230. Then they're going to subtract 123 from 1,230. Now, if this is too much work for one day, the two different columns, um, then you can do the one column one day for this lesson and then finish the second column the next day. Also, if you have an advanced student who likes some challenges, take a look at the explanation section. It says this, some ch children might want to choose a digit other than zero for the ones place in the top number. They will discover that the final difference will be that digit. So that means if your child starts with the number 1,234 and then subtracts 123 from it, they're going to end up with a four at the very end of the problem as opposed to the zero. Now, if you have time and your child has some mental energy left, go ahead and pick a math card game to play after this lesson has been completed. Well, that's it for the week. If you have any questions or concerns about a lesson, or if your child is struggling with something, give us a call or email us. We're here to help. I look forward to seeing you next week as we cover lessons 93 to 96. Have a great week, everybody.